She is the union from St. John's. Right well I know her name. And every night as I lie on my bed, I can hear those young widows come to I went into a couple music stores today down on Water Street and saw racks and racks and racks of music that I've never been exposed to. From what I understand, they, they have a full range of music here. I mean, there's a ska band, I've heard about thrash bands. I think ultimately our, our goal in Newfoundland is to make sure that Canadians and the international scene recognize the talent here. With your pickles and peas and battles and all, and they're sure to drive out in the spring, that's the time. Here's to you, love. Welcome to Newfoundland. We've invited the top people within the industry in Canada to come down this weekend to share in their knowledge and experience of music. So let's get out there and truly make this conference reflect the theme, which is bridging the gulf. There's just so much talent in Newfoundland. There's a tremendous amount of musical talent and musical creativity. And what was lacking was the business aspect of getting that music out to a much wider audience. Nobody watches and nobody cares. It's another fall through the cracks. These are the eyes of the lost and lonely. These are the eyes of the lost and found. These are the eyes of the sad. I'd like to register. My name is Richard Flohill. And uh, surviving the weather. Am I good enough to be in this business as a performer? Because it is the most competitive, difficult, awkward, bloody minded rat race that one could conceive. Why don't you eat my pony? We'll saddle up with my black mare. You're gonna find me riding, Mama, in this world somewhere. Something terrible happens if you don't promote. Nothing. Nobody knows, nobody says, nobody tries to be In your, face. in your face. We're a rock and roll band, and rock and roll is supposed to be in your face, so. Did you grow up here? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. You want to stay here? Um, I'd like to, as long as the industry provides it. What is your one cover song for you? Uh, this is one by Pearl Jam, the band that uh, I really love. to tackle doing Eddie Vedder's voice. I love his voice. Uh, he got a type of music you can get into, which is a lot of the newer stuff that we're writing is like that. Nothing has a certain structure to it. It's just feeling, feeling the music that you're singing. It's great. There's nothing better than actually singing something and doing something and just after going, wow, <laughs> that was better than drinking all night. Like our fathers before, we stand here on the shore, 
knowing we will always have a place to call our own. And our hearts, they are as one, we'll never be undone. We are the sons of Newfoundland, it's here that we belong. The most important thing about the band is that uh, a lot like Rankin family, they appeal to a wide audience. However, they appeal to a younger audience as well as an older audience. In the mid-1960s, the news rang out clear. Pack your bags and your nets, you must get out of here. Take your picks and your shovels, your rakes and your hoes. The government says you must pack up and go. What but exactly happened here in Newfoundland in the 60s? Well, after having joined Confederation, joined Canada in 1949, uh, the, the government at the time started getting on their way of servicing the people of Newfoundland with the promises that they, they had made in order to, to have Confederation come through. And uh, I think they found it quite difficult servicing people on isolated islands. I mean, you're looking at probably in, a, in Placentia Bay alone, 30 or 40 different communities that are totally isolated. Joey Smallwood was the premier of the day, and uh, he came, devised a plan called centralization, resettlement, and people were forced physically, if not physically, but just due to the circumstances, like you have to move in. They were offered money to move their houses, pick up everything they had. And in fact, they've literally moved houses. They towed their houses with their trap skiffs across this Placentia Bay to bigger, the bigger centers like Placentia and Arnold's Cove. And, and this happened all over Newfoundland. Good evening. Tonight in the news, emotions are running high in Newfoundland following a drastic announcement from Federal Fisheries Minister John Crosby this evening. In an effort to restore the nearly depleted stocks, Crosby has shut down the province's northern cod fishery for two years, beginning midnight tonight. was written many years before the, the concept of the video came up. Um, some things have happened here in Newfoundland um, over the last six, eight months that um, that have really shaken the place. Years ago, and I was I'd trapped several years, too many years, and I haven't dried up, say, 80 kentles, 90 or 40 kentles. All big fish. You'd have to get a pew, a gaff, pew men. That big, your head doesn't look big as that. But there's none of that around. I'll get cut. I'll cut. I, I was born in 1920 here. There's all sailboats. Very few in there, yeah, there was a few engines when I was on the go first. But it's mostly all sailboats. Whaleboats, you just call them. You used to sail in and out, you know, perhaps a couple of hundred, 150. And it was all handline. And the uh, cod traps came on the bean, and I think it was 1921. If you went to any house here, there's not one person, you wouldn't, there's no house here that the people are not affected by the fishery. And in every community along the coast, you'll find that. Yeah. And uh, once they gain control of that and they, uh, they're they able to, to look after the, the, the fish stocks and control them and manage them, uh, I think that the old ways will probably have to replace the, the modern technologies, but people will be able to survive, hopefully. so close and it's because we only really have each other to rely on. We don't have the uh, same kind of industry that's on the mainland. Yeah, it's so not, as, not as dog eat dog. dog. Yeah. If, if one group wants something to happen, usually it's in a number of groups interest. had to be involved just to get some notice down here. Just the fact that this music industry association just got off the ground in the last year or so, um, 
shows that there's a lot happening down here and people from the mainland are taking notice of all the acts up there. We've got the Thomas Trio. kind of connection with the music that is now your music, Pressure Dot Drop, so popular here. Something about an island mentality. Is that true? Definitely. Definitely. When you got the water all around you and you've got those sort of boundaries and you've got strong culture, the people, strong history, and uh, you've been had your affairs looked after by a power somewhere elsewhere, like London, we were a British colony for a long time, and I guess now it's transferred to Ottawa, now that we're part of Canada. But uh, it's, that, it's that type of thing that makes culture so strong in Ireland, Australia, uh, England, Jamaica. Newfoundland, Jamaica. There's always been a direct link with Jamaica too, because years ago, we used to trade fish for rum, and that's where Newfie Screech comes from. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a gentleman here, Matt, who would like to become an honorary member of Trapper John's Museum and Pub. I would. And an honorary Newfoundlander. I would. He would. Matt, there are three steps here. The first is you must stand up straight. I can do that. And you must consume one ounce of dark rum, being a good old Newfie screech, in one chug with no chaser. Now, Matt. Trapper John the Ford, it's a pleasure and honor. We induct you in as well over the 13,000 member here at the pub. We are staying here on George Street in Newfoundland. Be enjoyable and a trip back home and be safe. Coming up on the new music, Neil Young shifts gears and the alternative scene in St. John's, Newfoundland. We've always been kind of the odd, uh, the, the, uh, the, the sore thumb in the, in the Canadian landscape. We were the last province to join. There's a film out now called A Secret Nation that suggests that the referendum vote that actually brought us into Confederation in 1949 was in fact a fixed vote. And that we are still in effect more than probably an independent country, a secret nation. Our fathers were both in the National Convention. Makes us almost twins. Confederation babies. Hello, Andrew, who's that? We do live in a country that goes right across the country from Victoria to Halifax. So, I mean, in a sense, we are overlooked and we came in late and we have always been a have-not province as long as we've been a Canadian province and a bit of a joke. So I guess that why, would, uh, why wouldn't our music be overlooked? were constantly burning the town when the English weren't burning the town then the English would never help anybody who was here because they didn't want anybody to be here so all they were interested in was the boat so it, it could matter less to anybody that anybody stayed and still people stayed. In the middle of that raging inferno of the French burning it then the English burning it and uh, the, the busted uh, economy over and over again music played a big role in yes. keeping yeah. people's spirits up I guess. Yeah I guess it did eh and they're all um, yeah you know it was even when you were it's like uh, even other Canadians, when they did folk songs, they always did Newfoundland folk songs, you know, like Jack was every inch of sailor songs that, you know, that we always go, oh no, I hate those songs. <laughs> but now I sing them to Jesse. Jesse really likes them. So now I've found my, my love of them again. But uh, yeah, music has always been really, really important. It's like the Codco show. It's like we do a comedy show, but we, uh, we always have music. Like it's like you couldn't do, and all our stage shows we always had music, and so it's caught up, and it's not even like you think about, oh, you have to have music. It's just you do have to have music. Like you have to have a musician and some music and some songs, and because it's all part of the the fabric of you know 
the place. Oh, General Taylor gained the day. Walk him along, John, carry him along. Oh, General Taylor gained the day. Carry him to his burying ground. Put me away, you stormy. Walk him along. commercial, do you ever wonder whether you're going to lose something that you've been able to keep valuable, that you've been able to keep true? Does that ever Yes, yeah. I, I find that there's a, there's a balance that has to be maintained there all the way. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's really important to, to maintain the, uh, the traditional values, you know, and the culture and make sure that, you know, things remain intact somewhat. But also you have to, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to sell and make a living at what you do. And, and uh, and it's not only the business aspect, you know, but it's, to me it's important to get this music out to people. And it's not that I, I want, you know, the $20 that they have in their wallet for this CD. I want them to hear this music. You know, this is my life, this is my love, and, you know, I, I'm anxious for the, the more people that hear what we do. And the $20. Yes, Newfoundland is such a distinct culture, there is even a dictionary of Newfoundland English. And even though I personally would never refer to a Newfoundlander by the N-word, surprisingly, it's defined here. Newfoundlanders tend not to like other people calling them Newfies. It's, uh, it's derogatory, it's not exactly what we would... It's the goofy Newfie image. I find it's a diminutive, and like all diminutives, I mean, is is patronizing to a certain extent. There seems to be a fair a fair amount of controversy over the uh, over the term uh, Newfie. There was a, a letter sent out from the East Coast Music Awards uh, recently uh, that said, uh, you know, what's the sunrise from the Newfie Suite? And there were some people who took great exception to it and and actually plan on not attending the East Coast Music Awards as a result of that. I think that what those people need to do is to, if they feel really strongly about that that much is that they need the, to turn their attention to the people here in the province who put out all of those uh, books and, and pamphlets every year or so that kind of popularize that rubber boot culture and stuff, you know. And they also have to realize that it comes from, that expression comes from expatriate Newfoundlanders. People who live away from the province refer to themselves as Newfies. And, and for some odd reason, it's an endearing expression. So uh, it's it's a kind of a funny can of worms. I don't like I don't like the expression myself, but I, it's never bothered me. There is an alternative scene in Newfoundland. Hardcore experimental bands have made their mark here, inspired by the likes of Husker Du and Sonic Youth. With an ear to more commercially popular bands like Nirvana and Pearl Jam, some St. John's musicians are headed down the alternative path. With or without places to play, or even the remote whiff of a record deal, something exciting is happening here. People are surprised that an alternative scene is really happening here. I mean, generally, people associate this with the, the Celtic connection mm -hmm. and and uh, you know and what Roger House does, maybe some more traditional stuff, yeah. blues, etc. But are not so aware of, of the alternative scene, or are they? Well, I think one of the very the most <coughs> early punk bands around originated here in what the late seventies, the Slime. Yeah, seventy six at the seventy seven maybe. Yeah, been so that. there's there's been I was a, pretty young when the Slime yeah. started. There's been an alternative scene here for a long time. Yeah. So this is your territory? Yes. Alternative, mm -hmm. hardcore, metal, thrash. Is that a big market here in Newfoundland? Yes, it is. Uh, we have ranging from death metal to uh, alternative music such as you know, Dynasty Junior, the sub pop stuff, uh, Buffalo Tom. Uh, I'm not too familiar with death metal, but I bring in the titles. St. John's has had a fun scene now for a long time with early bands like Schizoid and uh, Touch Justice and all that sort of stuff. Really, really <laughs> Music 
can be made anywhere, you know. I think a lot of the stuff that people have been saying since the Seattle bands came out is that, you know, you can find this stuff in varying, in varying types and forms, but the same basic thing going on just about anywhere. Well, Potbelly is all about uh, being slow and heavy and sluggish gut rock is what we're all about. I'm Jeff. This is Doug. Yeah, it's definitely slow and pretty grinding, I think. This is Tony over here. I'm Tony. Hello. What about venues for you? Here. Are there enough places to play? Are there a lot of places to play? No, it's almost lot. negative. No. Well, no, I mean, there but, always turns out to be one place to play, usually. Yeah. Uh, like the people from the alternative scene will inhabit one bar. The bands will start playing there. It'll happen there for maybe the course of a couple of years. That place will close down. Inevitably, it happens. And then it just changes course. It goes somewhere else. Sebastian Lipa, Matt Clark, and Mike Kane. Hardship Post, let's put your hands together, please, ladies and gentlemen. What do you make of what you heard at the showcase? It was fabulous. Yeah. It was, um, I knew what was going to happen, um, but it was really nice to see industry people from Canada come down here and see it actually happen for themselves. It was great. I was very, very proud and happy that it happened this weekend here and the way that it did un unfold and stuff. It was great. Any surprises for you in terms of people that you found out about that yeah. you didn't know about? There was one band, uh, which is everybody's talking about this past weekend, is Hardship Post, which was uh, amazing. It blew me away. I knew all the boys in the band, but I never saw them play as a unit, and it was absolutely incredible. Creatively, what are you writing about? My past experiences that vary from munching on a little bit of sugar cane or for maybe even biting the inside of my mouth and uh, really creating a lot of blood. And uh, your iguana. My iguana dying. Tragic. <laughs> when it's so nice and warm down near the equator. What's he doing here anyway? You know, people make the assumption that if you're in a band that you want to make it, that you want to go somewhere, you want to break out of Newfoundland. Say a record contract gets offered to you, and I mean, the chances are that that could happen. Would you stay based in Newfoundland? Definitely, I think. I, don't, I think that it's completely feasible to stay in Newfoundland for us and uh, possibly just tour when we have to, when we, you know, for a few months of the year. Uh, possibly go somewhere where there's a really amazing studio if we uh, we're gonna do a big uh, deal recording but uh, f definitely I I'd want to stay here I find that uh, when I'm here because I travel I've traveled a fair bit I I, uh, I feel really comfortable here I write all the best you know, pretty all the music here while I'm away it feels uh, it just doesn't feel the same. None of us have any any idea or any hope of getting out of here. Our hope is to stay just here to... and to work and to be able to support ourselves. So to make records, hopefully. We'd probably die in Toronto. Why, <laughs> Why? Well, we wouldn't die physically, but I think the music would die. Because I think that this mm -hmm. is, you know, this yeah. is it, right? This is yeah. what uh, inspires us. Hopefully someone will break out of here and put the, the spotlight on this place because it's just amazing. The talent that, that's been, that's coming out. I can't believe it myself. <laughs> I didn't know. Still to come on the new music, Neil Young gets back to basics. I seen the needle and the damage done. A little part 